I'm Darren, one of the uh, bespoke shirt makers at Bud Shirt Makers. Under duress, I've been asked to show you how I press a shirt, just how I do it. That's all it is. So I'm just going to run through it quickly with you. So Normally, you wouldn't stand there in a two-piece suit. Most people would be in a towel or in their underpants doing their ironing. First piece of business, don't need a flash iron. You know, 30 pounds from Argos, 50 bucks from Home Depot, whatever. Um, it doesn't have to be distilled water, ionized water. You know, basic, good steam iron will work. I always start with the collar. I also finish with the collar as well. Focal part of the shirt. Trick with the collar is to iron from the point to the middle, from the point to the middle. Any fullness that's in the collar, because of the way we construct it, because um, it's a floating cotton canvas. Any fullness will be drawn into the middle and won't give you a nasty knife pleat down the edges. Okay, so we'll be back to that at the end. Yokes, great tool. Use the end of the board, it serves a purpose. In as much as you can move it about and get your yoke to lie nice and flat. And have your iron on the full steam People use spray guns. You can spray it if you want. And as you can see, having it on the end of the board gives it a nice flat finish. Cuffs. Again, uh, whether it's a double cuff or a button cuff, nice and flat. And I always like to go from the outside in again. Again, that's a construction thing because we use a cotton floating canvas and the way it's constructed, there is going to be a bit of fullness. Um, so come from the, from, the, from the ends into the middle. Some people, when they do their double cuffs, French cuffs, they, they like to fold it and then press it. I don't, I just like to do it flat. And then when I'm putting cufflinks in, it just naturally has a nice curve to it rather than a, a sharp edge to it. Flip over, same process from the ends to the middle. With regards to kind of laundry, I think the less you do to the shirts, your shirts, the better, wherever they're from. If they're all cotton and um, well made, the less you do to it, the better. 30, 40 degrees, normal household machine. No tumble drying, no radiators, just hang it up. It's much, much better for the cotton um, and easier to press as well because you're not drying out the, the cotton in that respect. So, your sleeve, you'll find your seam. Find your seam, shake it out, and again, that should lie nice and flat on your board. And I think this is the important hand when you're ironing. I know it's only ironing, but it, you can move it about, get it flat move different places, anchor it down. So just by putting this bit here, it helps keep it flat at the bottom. Same on the top there. And you can press the pleats if you've got them in your shirt, you usually have. Some people like to put a crease in the front of it, but I think this is the better way. It's the natural lay of the sleeve, so. How many shirts do you iron? Um, five. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only in the habit of doing my own sort of thing, but um, no, I mean, you know, working here, um, you know, if you've got customers coming in for sample fittings, if you've got the time, it's, it's always nice to kind of just give it a press out of the box. It looks much nicer. And you can see a bit more in the fitting as well, but it's um, something I just like to do, but it depends. I mean, our girls in Andover press hundreds, hundreds a week, so. So then we move on to the body of the shirt. This is great, just a normal island board like this, you can just lie it flat on there and you do it in in stages so you try and get the front yoke into that shape at the end and you're moving the shirt that way around you kind of do this part the, the under hem first where the buttons are this one always useful freehand again you're pulling it if you don't put it it tends to kind of just not lie flat and your iron increases into it and get it nice and flat in between the buttons the irons they have a little notch here so you can get in between the buttons and you'll find as well the less you do to the shirt as i said no no artificial heat uh, and radiators and stuff it just makes this part of it easier it's not as dry not as crispy and you just get a nice finish on your shirt you can use spray guns the, the irons generally have a spray fixture on it um, but i think the steam is enough ju just to kind of get it nice and cleanly pressed really so you've kind of done half of of one of the fronts and then you move it around again so you're now doing this part of the front which is the part that goes into the side seam which leads into the back and as I said we just keep moving it around stage by stage so we're on the back body now so we're working from the side seam here 
using the shape of the ironing board again. Some shirts have pleats, that's fine. Some people struggle with them. But again, this, this is the tool, this free hand, you just pull it and it just helps the, the, the pleat sit flatter that way. You're then working on the center of the back. So with our shirts, you know, there's a split, there's a split yoke so you can see that that's the center of the shirt. So you're working in the center of the shirt now, a bit more easier. You can just, plenty of steam. I know people who don't iron the back purely because, well, I'm wearing a jacket, you know. People only see the front and the collar and the cuffs and that's all they do, but I would know if, <laughs> if, if I was wearing a shirt with that, the whole thing would be impressed. Well, it defeats the object really. And I mean, a lot of people find ironing therapeutic. <laughs> Don't see it myself, but um, yeah, I can understand kind of why, but sometimes. So we're now on the sort of the last part of it now. So this is the left front where the top hem is. So this is the part that shows. Like the collar, like the cuffs, cotton lining in there. Pull it from the top, yeah, and come up the hem, yeah. And by pulling it, you'll see and you'll feel that it's pulling it quite flat and rigid, which is what you want. Because again, along with the collar, the front hem is a focal point of the shirt, whether you're wearing a tie or not. But I think it just helps it lie a bit flatter and a bit crisper. Um, nice and clean finish. Like I just said, the collar is the focal point of the shirt. So I always do it again at the end. So I tend to do it on the reverse side first, where you put your collar stays in. And again, from, from the point to the middle of the shirt, Plenty of steam. And again, from the point to the middle of the collar, and then flip it over. So this is the side that shows. This is your your side that's, that's presented. And one thing I've noticed that I do as well, I mean, you can iron the whole collar like that, that's fine. But I always tend to find that I kind of just do the top and put plenty of steam through that all the way through. I don't know why, it's just what I do. And that's it, all ready. Some collar stays.